Nigeria was transitioning in its first successful civilian government. I see. And I thought to myself that it would be a great time to move back home, to be part of that movement. Mm. And I must say that it took me another 10 years to fully integrate to back into the system. Yes. Because obviously coming back, you're coming back with a certain mindset, mm -hmm. thinking that you are advantaged. Right. But make no mistake, while you're there hustling and growing, nobody's stopping here. Yeah. People are also moving yeah. and growing. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is one of those countries where we have the highest return on, of investments yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. It's high risk, high return. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It goes both ways. Which is why you have to be very careful mm -hmm. um, you know, about your dealings, especially when it comes to finances. We have a 10 year mortgage program where if you paid off within the first five years, it's a principal only mortgage, mm -hmm. as long as you paid off within the first five years. So it's a great tool for people in diaspora. Mm -hmm. No other property in Nigeria offers you this mortgage plan because it is designed mm -hmm. exclusively for Azuri Towers. Mm -hmm. So if you have your dollars, you can come take a mortgage because the mortgage is in Naira and it is pegged at an agreed exchange rate. Mm. Everything is possible. Mm. I've seen it, I've learnt it, I've drawn from that world. Mm. Everything is possible. Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we have dialogue with diasporan who decided to leave the diaspora behind and relocate to their continent uh, doing business, even moving back and forth or even transitioning and as you guys already know, we are here in Nigeria, uh, touring some properties, look, looking for opportunities, interviewing entrepreneurs and diasporans who has relocated so far. And then today we do have here someone very special. Uh, he's a realtor. He's been, you know, he's moved back to the continent here in Nigeria for a time now. Uh, he's been doing amazing things. So I'm privileged to have him here on the show, you know, to discuss his journey and why he made, he decided to, you know, move back to Nigeria. So without further ado. Mr. Dapo, welcome on the show. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. We, ha we did a video together. Yes, we did. Touring Azuri Towers. Yes. Which is one of the properties inside Eco Atlantic City. Yes. I find interest, interest in your story. Uh, that's why I want to you know, share with my audience. But people are watching you for the first time. They okay. might not know who you are. Can okay. you please briefly introduce yourself to the people watching for the first time? Yeah, sure. My name is uh, Dapo Macaulay. And I head uh, business development for a co-development company, FZE. Uh, in Eco Atlantic City. Mm. Okay. Now, I, I, we were talking about you know the opportunities yes. here on the continent and how some youth sometimes don't see it. Yes. And you you even have an international experience and in living yes. outside at one point yes. in your life and now reconsidering moving you considering moving back down yes. here. I wanted to you know share a little bit of your story to us. Even the beginning of it, you going there, yes. achieving what exactly you're looking for, yes. and now looking back to see the opportunities here in Nigeria and, and saying, you know what, I think I, I'm better off yes. going back to Nigeria and you yes. know building this, you know what I'm you yes. have here so yes. far. Uh, well, so um, let me start from from my high school. Mm. Uh, so I went to the Nigerian Navy Military School for Boys in Abeokuta, Ogun State. Okay. Uh, one of the most prestigious uh, schools in this country. Mm. Um, and my plan was to go to the Nigerian Defense Academy, which is the reason why I went to the Nigerian Navy Secondary School in the mm -hmm. first place. Uh, but you see, Nigeria was plagued with strikes um, in the universities. So I had made up my mind. Um, I'm pretty sure my parents had, had a different plan for me. Mm. But I had made up my mind that I wasn't going to go to a... Mm -hmm your regular university that mm. I was going to go to the Nigerian Defense Academy. I was going to graduate as an officer and working in, in the intelligence department. I see. Uh, but then America came knocking, mm. you know, and, and um, then it wasn't such a difficult decision to make um, because, I mean, everybody wanted an opportunity to go to the States. Yeah. Um, so I took my exams. I passed. I um, got an acceptance from Clarion University of Pennsylvania and off I went in in August of 1998. Wow. Um, so of course I was in Pennsylvania for four years, mm -hmm. um, got my first degree and then I moved to Baltimore mm -hmm. um, where I got my first corporate experience. I mean I'd been working part-time jobs while I was a student and I worked on Pennsylvania Avenue in Towson, Maryland for mm -hmm a custom publishing and marketing company called mm. Media 2, mm -hmm. um, owned by a guy called John Witte um, at the time. Mm -hmm. 
um, Media 2 is now known as Today Media, um, which is bought over by a company in Delaware. Mm -hmm. So I worked with them for about 11 months. And something interesting happened while I was working with them. Um, there was an AT&T store on our street. Mm. And the decor was really nice. It was built up like a spaceship. And every time I walked in there, um, the guys would have their Bluetooth sets on. The, the Bluetooth mm -hmm. set just came yeah. out at the time. Um, GSM was booming in. And these guys used to talk in codes. And I used mm -hmm. to wonder what they were talking about. And I used to remember saying to myself that, you know what, mm -hmm. I, I would like to work in the telecommunications um, industry and find out exactly what these guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. So as um, chance and preparation will have it, I got a job with AT&T Corporation. Wow. And so that was my stint in telecommunication. Mind you, I have a communication background. I see. Uh, which is what I read for my first degree in university. Mm -hmm. So having worked with AT&T uh, for another year or so, I started to draw myself a five-year plan mm. because corporate America was... Um, much more evident, mm -hmm. glaring mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. at this time. So I had to weigh my options. I had to look at my qualifications, look at where I stood, look at what my network, um, network was work, like, yeah. and decide whether I wanted to continue in America or whether I wanted to find opportunities elsewhere. elsewhere. Mm. So I drew up a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And the five-year plan said, you know, get as much experience as you can get, make sure you get your master's, and then move back home. Mm. And so I started um, seeking out for universities, um, you know, to to acquire my master's mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. But then again, as you may know, mm -hmm. your master's in America is 18 months, mm -hmm. you know, and I sort of felt because of the trajectory that I was on, um, I sort of felt that, you know, I didn't want to go back for another 18 months. So mm -hmm. I started to explore um, the UK where you had a one year master's program I instead. See. Um, so that I could sort of accelerate my... Finish quickly. Yes, yeah, so finish quickly and move back home. Um, so I applied to Kingston University, of Pen uh, Kingston University in Surrey, and uh, there, was a new, mm. there was a new program called Political Communication Advocacy and Campaigning. Mm. And I thought it was a right fit because I, I had a communication background. Mm. Nigeria was transitioning... Um, was transitioning its first successful civilian mm. government. I see. And I thought to myself that it would be a great time to move back home, mm. to be part of that movement. Mm. Um, and so I got my degree in political communication, advocacy and campaigning. Interesting. And said to myself that, well, it's time to bring all this knowledge back home, mm -hmm. see how we can uh, play politics in a more sophisticated way, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. Um, and so I moved back home in, in 2000, I mean, I finished in 2006, but mm. I finally moved back home in 2007. Mm. And I must say that it took me another 10 years to fully integrate into back the into the system. Yes. Interesting. Um, because obvi obviously coming back, you're coming back with a certain mindset, mm -hmm. um, thinking that you are advantaged. Right. But make no mistake, while you're there hustling and growing, nobody's stopping here. Yeah. People are also moving yeah. and growing, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I came back home, and my first job was with a company called PR Africa International. Mm -hmm. My boss at the time was a guy called Dakwa Delegon, fantastic guy. Mm. I'm very glad that he was my landing point because mm. I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. uh, not only did I learn a lot from him, I got to travel um, quite a bit. Um, he was the guy that started the Lekki Song Splash mm. in Nigeria, one of the first big concerts owned a company called benjamin black and company mm. was the first one to bring in the three phase um digital boards into nigeria at the time and then also help uh, gt bank acquire advertising space in terminal five at gatwick airport mm -hmm. so wow. we did a lot of media related stuff mm -hmm. and then um, after i'd worked with him for for a little bit i got an offer from uh, rosabelle leo burnett mm. Uh, which is one of the, at the time, was one of the big, biggest advertising agencies mm. in this country. And I did a stint with them for about five years, um, you know, handling different accounts, portfolio of accounts, Coca-Cola, Toyota, um, name it, some of the biggest accounts in this country, um, which was also a great learning curve for me. 
and then I, 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 rushed the, I rushed through the ranks pretty quickly mm. and by my mid-30s I had already made a uh, client service director at Leo Burnett. That's it. And um, of course the company had some, had some issues, they had some um, transitioning issues, you know, and I decided after that to start my own practice. Mm. Um, so I set up a company called Macaulay and Co, mm. uh, which was a communications company, and you know started looking for business. So some of the clients that I serviced was the Lagos State Government, most mm. specifically mm -hmm. the Lagos State Electricity Board and the Lagos State okay. Ministry of Environment. And um, I had a few other clients that I was servicing. Uh, Visionscape was responsible mm -hmm. for the transitioning of the environmental management mm. um, in the state, but of course uh, they also had issues. Um, so I did that for about five years, you know, and I must say that doing business mm. um, in Nigeria uh, was not easy. Mm. Uh, being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, you know, mm -hmm. trying to drive mm -hmm. um, focus every day and make the best out of it because uh, we do have a lot of setbacks mm -hmm. in terms of an enabling environment, but there are great opportunities in this country mm. which one must recognize. And I also have... Uh, a pretty, f if I may say, a wealthy network of people, people who are great minds and bright minds and have done very well for themselves and in different industries. And they have also led me into their own mm -hmm. world and, you know, um, sort of learnt me their own knowledge of how to navigate mm -hmm. um, through certain parts uh, of the corporate world here in Nigeria, having moved back mm. um, and trying to find my own my own footing. Mm -hmm. So I'd done that for about five years, and then this recent opportunity that I have presented itself. Mm. Um, the marketing director of Eco Hotels, yes. uh, funny enough, reached out to me to say, "Look, there's a company called Eco Development. They're looking for someone that can help them, you know, with their marketing, sales, and communication. And I think you might be the right person for mm. it." So I met with the MD at the time after three interviews with him and going through a rigorous interview um, process with Philips Consulting, mm -hmm. I finally came out tops. Mm -hmm. And five years later, um, as a retire as a standing, mm -hmm. and um, I like to think that I've put some, a little bit of value into that, mm, like um, that. you know, to bring the project to fruition. Mm -hmm. I like that. What would you say you, you did in the initial stages that even though it took you 10 years, yes. but made your transition more successful because people eventually, they yes. go back. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. People would wait for two, three years. They don't yes. see. Yes. They don't, they'll just go back. Yes. I've had, you know, even Ghanaians or even some Nigerians yes. who say they try to try to, yes. you know, come add value yes. to the society, but yes. because of some few things, yes. they feel like they're way better off in the UK, in the US, UK. and they just leave. But what do you do differently that held you down? I mean, you said you work with a couple of brands, yes. but is it mindset okay kind of thing? so so first of all first of all let me go back to my high school which was a military school it prepared us for the future i must say that over and over again it was a tough school mm. and so it prepared us for the future so even having left the country to a more easier if you will mm -hmm. uh, economic climate or social um, climate when i moved back home I had a survival instinct. Mm. That was number one. I see. Number two, which is m even more important than the first reason, is family structure. Mm. Mm. I come from a big, loving family. Um, so that family structure also helped me um, ground myself, if you will. Mm. Some people may have left with their entire family and then they're deciding to move back alone mm -hmm. and there's nobody really on ground to show them the ropes. To kind of give the uh, soft landing. Yes, to give the soft landing, mm -hmm. and, you know, if you will, uh, help them tap into the economy or into the social space and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very, very grateful for the type of family that I'm from because mm -hmm. they did give me um, mm -hmm. a soft landing in terms of, you know, introducing me to the right people, um, you know, even even something as simple as having somewhere to come back to um, <laughs> is a big deal. Yeah, that's to um, call it home. Will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, family structure was one of uh, was one of them. Mindset is another, because mm -hmm. there was nothing the country was going to throw at me mm. um, that I had either not been through or that I was not ready for. Mm. I'm not saying that it was not tough. <laughs> you know, there were some yeah. there were some tough times. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you had told me that I could survive on a certain sum of money, I would have said it was a lie. Mm. But 
you know, here we are again. You know. Outline some of the challenges that you went to initially, just like you just before, the tough ones. Yes. Yeah. You said financially. So, well. so, so first of all, there's a, and this is just my personal experience, you know, and things may have changed, but what I found out when I first moved back is there's a, how would I put it? Mm -hmm. There's a preconceived notion right. that anybody who leaves the country mm -hmm. is automatically better, better off. That's so true. So when you, even when you move back, mm -hmm. People are not as willing to help you out as much, yes, as much as they would someone who didn't get the opportunity to leave or has been on ground with them mm. all this while. Interesting. They automatic automatically think that, you know, you have it going on and everything is okay, mm -hmm. you know, and that usually is not the case. No. You know, sometimes all you have is just the experience mm -hmm. that you've brought back that you're trying to you apply. know add mm -hmm. or apply mm -hmm. you know into the society to create or add value mm -hmm. value into the space mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the first um, first things that I had to learn and then secondly of course which stems from the first one is also you know the trust issue mm. you know um, so sometimes I find myself dialing down the way I talk mm. or Just you know to fit in. yes <laughs> to fit in you know but luckily for me honestly luckily for me um, I, I consider myself a pretty grounded person. So take, for instance, one of the things that happened was I grew up on the island in Victoria Island. And when I moved back, I was working on the mainland and I made a decision to move mm. to the mainland mm. um, so that I'm much closer to work. I was much closer to work at, um, at the time. And moving to the mainland does something for you. Mm. It brings you much closer to the people. Community. Yes, if you will. So... I'm down there with the boys mm -hmm. on the streets. Mm -hmm. I'm up there mm -hmm. with the queen drinking tea. Mm -hmm. That has always been my philosophy. Mm. Or the king. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> wow, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what will you say? How many years have you uh, moved back? How many years now? It's been 17 years now. 17 years. Yes, it's been 17 years. Let's, let's listen. I mean, look, back in the days, our forefathers take their bag, yeah. right? Get their flight tickets and that's it. Yeah. They go to the US, UK with nothing. Yes. Right? At one point, some people end up sleeping on the street. Yes. But then you, you see, 10 years, 20 years into it, they built all these mansions back home. Mm. And we look at them like they are very successful. Yeah. On the other hand, diasporans want have this kind of instant graphic, uh, gratification. gratification mindset that I want to be able to move back with this amount of money, yeah. invest it in this six months, yes. and then get my return back as soon as possible. Yes. If not, I'm leaving two yes. years and then they're out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You, it took you 17 years to yeah. even get to where you are now. Yes. What do you think we are doing differently that is making us feel like we need everything quick, 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 quick? Because most diasporans are in this kind of mindset, mindset. right now at the moment. Mm. And it's unfortunate, but I've met yeah. so many people like that. That want it, that want it now. Yes. I, think, I, I think that mostly has to do with misinformation, mm. if you ask me. And, you know, a lot of people who are not on ground will normally use a lot of information shortcuts. Mm. And it depends on who's feeding you that information. You know, and if, if you get into the wrong hands, they will tell you what you want to hear. Mm. And they'll take your funds and that's it. So I will advise my brothers and sisters out in the diaspora who are looking to move back and settle down to always make sure that they do their research. Mm. You know, do your research, make sure that you have people you can trust on ground that will give you the right mm. type of, adv of advice that you need uh, mm -hmm. to move forward. Now, Nigeria is one of those countries where we have the highest return on in of investments yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. It's high risk, high return. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It goes both ways. Which is why you have to be very careful, mm. um, you know, about your dealings, especially when it comes to, mm -hmm. when it comes to finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to real estate, you've been, how, how long have you, I mean, you started with Echo. So I've, I've been in the real estate space for going on five years five now. Five years. Yes. I see. Like I said, I have a communication background, so mm -hmm. that allows me work in different industries, mm -hmm. if you will. So mm -hmm. before, I, before I started working in the real estate space, I was in the um, you know, environmental space, mm, okay. if you will, working with uh, environmental management space, working okay. with Visionscape, mm -hmm. um, the Lagos State um, Ministry of Environment, okay. 
Um, I also did a little bit of energy. energy um, okay. Yes, working with the Lagos State Electricity Board, putting together a campaign called um, um, Save Energy, Save Money, mm. uh, which pretty much educated people on mm -hmm. energy efficiency. Mm. Um, I've also put together, um, you know, different events um, around um, sustainability mm. um, and green living, you know, mm -hmm. teaching people how to re reuse, recycle, you know, things like that. So my background has allowed me to work in different industries with different organizations and what I try to do is I just pull knowledge mm -hmm. from all Everywhere. these different places. Yes, yes. That you've yes. Had. exactly. Wow. Well, that's impressive. If you have advice to people who, I mean, that's been hoping to step in your shoes someday, move yes. back and back on the journey. Yes. What are the three things you think they should know before coming down? So first of all, try to visit home as much as possible. Mm. I also think that one of the advantages that I had was that I made sure that I came home at least every other year. Mm. I mean, back then, it wasn't, tickets were expensive. It wasn't like I was earning any real money. Mm. I was still, you know, relying on my, on my folks and mm -hmm. family to help, help out with that. But I did manage to come home every other year, mm. you know, so that kept that kept me grounded. You know, I knew what was going on. Um, another thing, of course, is to keep abreast of uh, the news and information that's going on in the country, and most especially keep in contact with people that you can trust. Mm. You know, some of those people that you grew up with, that know you in and out, mm -hmm. um, some of your friends who are doing really, really well, mm -hmm. um, also keep in contact with them so they can give you information of what's going on and mm -hmm. where you can put your money. What to and do what and what yes, not to do. And what, what to do and what not mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Information, information, information. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just try to get get as much information as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. I mean, look, there's several niches or kind of investment you can do to get get your money back. Real yeah. estate is one of them. Yeah. Um, even restaurants and stuff like yes, that. What other businesses do you think people can venture into that you've seen other people yes. succeed at it? Well, I mean, one of the um, so energy. Mm -hmm. um, is a big thing right now in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I have a, a few friends who are playing in the oil and gas sector, but most especially gas. Mm. There's a lot of talk in the country right now about transitioning from fossil fuels to other types of sustainable energy. And I think one of the um, areas that the government is really relying on, and even the private sector, mm -hmm. is uh, CNG, um, mm. you know, compressed natural gas for to power cars or to power generators and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that is an area where people should be looking at long term if you know, mm -hmm. you, you're looking to go into that. I see. Um, you know, there are other people who, again, there are a few Nigerian companies that are doing really, really well. So mm -hmm. you might want to you know, buy into their stocks mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that as far as the stock market is concerned. Mm -hmm. Uh, look at some of the companies that did really, really well last year, how mm -hmm. much their stocks were at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and what their, what their stocks are at the end mm -hmm. of the year. Some of them did really well, so mm -hmm. you might want to invest mm -hmm. um, in those types of places as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then wow. there, there, there are a lot of capital houses with great wealth tools uh, that you can also look into. But mm -hmm. again, this boils down to information mm -hmm. and having the right people on ground mm -hmm. to help you know where you need to put your money mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we talk more about real estate for okay. a second? Yeah. You, obviously, you've sold you've sold some houses to people. Yes, yes, uh, quite a bit in mm -hmm. Azuri Towers. Great. Yeah. Now, I want you to walk me through the whole process of you know people identifying you in a property, yes. understanding how they can you know make money from their property, yes. um, even moving forward. Like the whole, I want you to brief me on that. So, uh, as you know, we are on the higher end of the market. Mm -hmm. um, we sell luxury apartments that meet the standards um, anywhere in the world. Um, so, really, we are talking to the 1% of the 1% um, in the country. Um, I'll divide my clients into two. Mm. You know, Azuri One is a product that caters really 500 square meter apartments, they're huge apartments, luxury apartments, and it caters really to people who have come um, of age, if you mm. will. They've done everything that they need to do. They're very, very successful. Mm. And at this point in time, they're looking to downsize from a 2,000 square meter home to a 500 square meter apartment. Mm. So that is the unique selling point for these people that mm. look, you don't have to worry about 
your grounds anymore. You don't have to worry about exorbitant energy bills because everything that mm. you need is taken care of in this curated community. Mm. That is what, a, what attracts those type of people. Mm. On the second hand, you have top executives, mm. banks, mm -hmm. lawyers, mm -hmm. if you will, doctors, mm -hmm. um, that are also looking to tap into the new idea of living in a curated community. Mm. Um, Equa Atlantic offers you a lot, mm. if you will. Um, great grounds for riding, for walking, you know, um, the air you mm -hmm. take in is, is as clean as they come. And these people want a place where their children can ride their bikes, mm -hmm. play around, and not be worried with a lot of the pollution that you get mm -hmm. in the old city, mm -hmm. the old part of the city. Mm -hmm. um, so they're the ones buying in the second tower because the amenities that we provide um, readily, you know, attract, you know, their children and even uh, their discerning, mm -hmm. their discerning minds. Um, and then you have a third class of people who are looking to buy for investment purposes. Mm. Now, we normally peg our rental yield at around 6% of the value of the property. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the type of interest that the new city is generating, that creates a lot of opportunity for people who are interested in investing in those type of properties um, to make a sizable amount of income because you have a lot of top exec top yeah. organizations that are looking to put their top executives in the type of apartments that we build mm. um, if you will um, so those are the third group of people and that is the reason why they're buying mm -hmm. um, in a place like ours mm -hmm. but as you know you can never go wrong with investments um, in real estate especially when it's you know a well built mm -hmm property like mm -hmm. ours mm -hmm. um, it will always increase in value mm -hmm. in capital capital gains it's a great store of value mm -hmm. if you will mm -hmm. and um, it's a legacy mm -hmm. uh, to hold on to and to bequeath mm -hmm. uh, to your children and many generations mm -hmm. to come how many years do you think it would take for like the third option yes for an investor to recoup their investment I would say about 10 years. About 10 years? Yes, I would say about 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I would say about 10 years. And can this number be reduced or if it's off-plan purchase? Mm -hmm. Your properties are all off-plan purchase? Yes, they're all off-plan. I mean, now we're done. So anybody mm -hmm. that is buying right now is mm -hmm. buying a completed building. Yes. Okay. Yes. But this, does this, because normally in Ghana what we do is people purchase their land off-plan okay. and then sell it after it's done mm -hmm. for... 200 percent 300 percent is that option available there how does that work elaborate on the off-plan side of things so up i mean you will always be advantaged when you buy off plan mm -hmm. um so take for instance when we were selling off plan um we we're selling at about eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars you know for say a three bedroom mm -hmm. that same apartment today we're asking for uh, 1.1 million dollars so which means in the last four years about three hundred thousand dollars, which is about they say about twenty five percent gain mm -hmm. on 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 the property mm. uh, has been accrued. Interesting. You know, so it's always great to come to come off plan. Mm -hmm. Plus, we also have a wealth tool, and I call it a wealth tool because mm -hmm. we have a ten year mortgage program where mm -hmm. if you paid off within the first five years, it's a principal only mortgage, mm -hmm. as long as you paid off within the first five years. So it's a great tool for people in diaspora. Mm. No other property in Nigeria offers you this mortgage plan because it is designed mm. exclusively for Azuri Towers. Mm. So if you have your dollars, you can come take a mortgage because the mortgage is in Naira. And it is pegged at an agreed exchange rate. Mm. That doesn't depreciate. Yes, no. So it, it's, it's locked in. Yes, yes, it's locked in. Mm -hmm. It's locked in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, for for however long for the first five years when you when when, mm -hmm. when you pay in. So what I'm trying to say is, look, the dollar will always have an advantage over the naira. So if you have your dollars, why don't you take a naira mortgage? Because your dollar will always appreciate. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time for you to pay, you liquidate your dollars and pay off 
I pay see. off your NIO loan. So it, it makes more, much yes, more sense. Yes, yes. So at the end of the day, you'll, you'll be paying less than... Mm -hmm. what, what is the disadvantage of uh, off-plan? Now that we've talked about the advantage, what are the, the disadvantages of off-plan? So? Well, the dis one of the biggest disadvantages mm -hmm. um, is that... Both from a uh, developer perspective. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Okay. I mean, if you get if you get a horrible developer, then you might never see your your property you might never see the light of day. Mm. So, of course, that's one of the disadvantages. Which is again, I say, always do your research so that mm. you know the type of organization that you're dealing with. Mm. You know, um, our build is as uh, ITB. Um, ITB is responsible for building um, buildings such as the King's Tower, mm -hmm. the National Assembly the Kurama Beach residents. So they have been fire tested and trusted. Mm. Um, you know, so again, do your research as far as who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be one of the biggest advantages of, of buying off plan mm -hmm. uh, is that if you get into the hands of the wrong person, your project might never see the light of day. Mm -hmm. If you get into the hands of a great person, you'd be saving a whole lot of money buying off plan mm -hmm. rather than buying a finished product. Interesting. Let's move away from that a little okay. bit. I interviewed a gentleman um, who is now 27 years old. Okay. Uh, started real estate, you know, he started away renting houses okay. to students. Yeah. And now he's building um, apartment complex okay. with studio and one bedroom. And he have a very unique mindset yeah. in believing that it's, it's possible to make it here in Nigeria, yeah. regardless of the NEPA, regardless of everything. He acknowledged that there's problems. Yes. And then, and you know, still went ahead to develop what he, he's been building. Yeah. Um, seven, what, I'm not sure how many years, but been yeah. very successful. Yeah. On the other hand, most of the youth kind of have this, it's not possible to make it here mentality. Mm -hmm. um, you have a very strong mindset. You yeah. say you, you were in the military. Yeah. Uh, and because well, of military your, school. Yeah. Military, sorry. Yeah. Military school. Yeah. And that's why you have that kind of unique mindset. Yeah. What do you think the youth have to do differently or what kind of mindset, you know, the youth have to adapt in order to be in, in your position or yes. in this gentleman's position that I just mentioned? So there, there needs to be a reorientation, if you will. Mm. We need to assert our identities more, and that comes from a place of self-esteem, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, we need mentors, mm -hmm. we need tutors that would help build confidence in the, in the upcoming you know, uh, generation. generation. That most especially is what we need, uh, a shift in their mindsets um, that, that most of whatever it is that they're looking for outside of this country is within this country. Again, I say to you, I grew up around a lot of strong men you know, I grew up around a lot of hustlers, people who wanted to do for themselves, and which is why I say that perhaps a lot of the younger people need mentors, mm -hmm. you know, people who would help them believe in themselves, help them see their capabilities. Did you had one? You know, I had many. Mm. I had many, I have, I have many uncles who have done very well for themselves, who are very responsible, who are very smart, and I made sure that I, I spent a lot of time around them. Mm -hmm. But not even my uncles, mm -hmm. even my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I I'm very lucky that I I hang around with with people who have discerning minds, who are like me, who are goal getters. You know, it's very very important to be around people like that because mm -hmm. it builds confidence mm -hmm. um, in you. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, one thing that I think from your story I realize is you you had people who had an extensive network who made it easier for you so you had access to this kind of network that is am true. i correct that and is true. also mentorship yes um i find out that mostly even in ghana mm -hmm. most Irishmen move back and they don't necessarily have any family mm -hmm. that maybe you, you are privileged yes. to have and most of the time end up doing meet and greet with their fellow african-americans mm -hmm. or diasporans who move back. back okay so they don't necessarily tap into the, the the system, the system with the okay. network yeah. that mm -hmm. is within the system yes. and sometimes they are at a dis disadvantage Vintage, because yes. if you know Ghana uh, or Africa is who you know yes. and, and stuff like yeah. that um, obviously that fast track and made you relatively successful compared yeah. to maybe someone who had wouldn't have um, that w what do you think they should do you know in order to have that kind of network even if they have no family member uh, who can provide that uh, to them? So I'm, I'm pretty sure that these types of, um, how would I put it, these types of 
ecosystems already exist where you know you go visit families and they take you in and they show you the culture for about two weeks or three weeks so that you can immerse yourself um, in the culture. Um, I think that maybe before they delve into say coming to the continent or the country to do whatever it is that they want to do because maybe they have one African friend or so, they should try to get to know an African family, you know, they should try to visit more often before deciding to finally move down because when they visit a few times, it will allow them to meet different groups of people, um, if you will, and then that opens up their network mm. um, even more. Mm. What, what you would will. you wish you knew before you knew before moving back in two thousand and six? I wish I had done a little bit more research mm. on corporate Nigeria mm. and how it works. <laughs> and how it works. Yes. I thought I was going to come in and be the biggest and the baddest. <laughs> <laughs> but it was different. But I was, I was quickly humbled. Wow. Mm, yes. Mm. So. Well, I think one thing about Africa is it humbles you yes. and it brings you back yes. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, um, well, I think most people have interviewed a lot of diasporans and they always say, don't come with that kind of savior mentality. Yeah. Would you say you had that little bit of savior mentality when you were moving back? Um, no, mm. no, not a savior mentality. Mm. I just wanted to add, you know, to it. Mm. I thought that my ideas could, you know, enhance the experience that we had, um, whether it be social, political, or economic. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. If you do have any final words, I mean, to people who have tuned in and watching this interview, yeah. what would that message be? Everything is possible. Mm. I've mm. seen it, I've learnt it, I've drawn from that well. Mm. Everything is possible. Wake up every day, go out there, do the best that you can do because you're doing God's work. Mm. And I'm not trying to stay it in a religious place because I'm not really that religious, more spiritual. Um, but to be godly is to build, mm. is to create. So keep doing whatever it is that you're doing well do it so well that your friends will call their friends to come see what you're doing i like that you know and stay positive this is your home this is your continent mm. it is what you make it mm. Mm. i like that if you have one thing to change about nigeria what would that be leadership leadership mm. it's leadership the right leadership yeah the right leadership i like that how do people find you how do people find me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you can always come on a tour of Azuri Towers. I'll be more than happy to take you around. And um, I'm on Instagram. Mm -hmm. My handle is BY0786. Um, that was my boy number in military school, in case, <laughs> in case you were wondering. Yeah. So uh, that's how you find me. All right. Thank yes. you so and much. On, and on LinkedIn, of course. LinkedIn. OK. Yes. What's your LinkedIn? Um, it's Adidakwa Macaulay. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to leave everything on the screen, also in the description, so it's yes. easier uh, for you. And uh, thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah, thank you so sharing, much. Sharing, you know, some of your story uh, okay. with me and my audience. You're, right? you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right, you. guys. All right. If it's your first time here, please don't forget to like the video. Uh, comment down below what you enjoyed about this episode. Let's get the engagement going. Uh, share to friends and family so they can also benefit uh, from the. Are they going to get a discount if they come? Back? <laughs> hey. <laughs> You might depends on uh, it depends yeah. on what we negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, reach out to them. Yeah. Look, I always say that the real estate market here in mm. Africa is booming. Uh, the yesterday's price is not today's price. Mm. So if you think it's expensive, wait till next next year or next five years. <laughs> the time is now. Uh, take advantage now. That is early, and I uh, share to friends and family so they can benefit too as well. And yeah. So without further ado, let's just say bye bye to the people watching. All right. All right. Peace. Bye. Mm -hmm.